Welcome back in Detroit Lions fans. Another day of training camp in the books. I apologize for the late episode. Uh, I'm back to work. And by the time I get home, you know, I got everything typed up, ready to go. So I got to get it out when I can. I would have liked to get this episode out a lot earlier, but here we are. We got to talk some Detroit Lions. I'll call this like day two of training camp. I know we technically reported uh, this is day three officially, but uh, with practices and stuff going on, I'm going to call this day two. Um, Real quick, I have to mention the the nickel battle between Amik Robertson and Emmanuel Mosley. Full effect. I'm not going to dive into that. Uh, I didn't cover it in yesterday's show. Um, Again, I'm not at training camp, unfortunately, so I just kind of have to go off what I see on Twitter. Um, And I did not see anything about Emmanuel Mosley playing nickel um, when I recorded my episode yesterday. So I apologize for that. I know it was covered already. Um, I'm not going to fully dive into that one. But I am going to dive into today some stuff I saw. Man, I'm telling you right now, Terrell Williams the absolute difference maker on this defensive line as a, as a defensive line coach coming from the Tennessee Titans. Every single episode I've done recently where I've talked about a defensive lineman in any shape or form, I had to mention Terrell Williams. It had to be done. This guy was one of the best under the radar hires for the Detroit Lions this season. Um, I think it's going to play a massive, massive role. Dan Campbell pretty much coming out and saying that he already sees a difference in the defensive line, just in fundamentals. Like we're talking the building blocks of football, like the little stuff. We're not even really getting into um, X's and O's, really just fundamental stuff. Dan Campbell is noticing a difference. I think that speaks volume. And I know Dan's not going to tip his hand on on too much when it comes defensively, especially what we see in training camp, even the people who are up there. uh, You know, you don't want to put stuff out there for your opponents to see. You want to keep stuff a little bland. You want to keep a little, you know, you want to have a little mystery to you. So what I feel like you're seeing at training camp is not really what's going on inside the facility where it's a little bit more limited on who's there. Um, but it is still great to hear that the defensive line is looking better. I think that they are going to be an instrumental piece in this defense. Um, I've always said, and my philosophy will always be a really, really good defensive line will cover up a lot of defensive problems. If you're putting pressure on a quarterback and stopping the run, it doesn't matter who's back there in your secondary. You could have me back there. If the quarterback's running for his life, doesn't matter. And we got dogs in our secondary, too, that I'm not even worried about. I'm just saying, man, that defensive line, the trenches, that's the heart and soul of offense and defense. That's where games are won. You guys know this. You've heard it all before. So I'm really excited to hear some stuff like that that Dan Campbell talked about. Um, another, uh, I guess, I guess for most people it's exciting, but um, Jake Bates hitting – 250. I heard multiple. I don't know how many multiple means. Is it two, three, four, five? He went six for six in his field goals today um, with multiple kicks over 50 yards. That's good to hear. I don't get overly excited about kickers. They're people too. I understand. But kickers, you know, Detroit, do we even use kickers? We're a fourth down team. All right. We don't, we, that's great to hear. It's nice to know that. If on a rainy day, Dan Campbell wants three points for whatever reason, he can go out and kick a field goal for 55 yards. I don't see it happening too much, but I guess it's exciting to see. Um, So Jake Bates coming from the USFL. uh, A lot of people were very excited to sign him. I did an episode on it. It wasn't my most exciting episode, but uh, we did have to talk about it. So Jake Bates looks good. How's that? That position battle going to shape out i don't exactly know i'd like to see some in-game stuff but i mean six for six is still pretty impressive i'm not trying to take anything away from it i'm just saying when it comes to kickers and if we're talking football kickers is probably just going to be at the bottom of my list but have to mention it it is impressive six for six 50 yard field goals it's nice to see but what more excites me is seeing a couple guys who were playing that opposite edge edge of aiden hutchinson today Josh Pascal and Levi Anzarike, who I've said on record, Levi Anzarike, this is a big year for him. This is almost a make or break season for Levi. Um, got to stay healthy. Got to be on the field. When he's on the field, I feel like he's a really, really solid player. I'm not going to say he's like a pro bowler or I'm rushing to the store to buy his jersey anytime soon, but I think he is a impact role player. Uh, I think that's probably the best way I know how to put it. I'm not overly excited but i do want to see him doing exactly the kind of stuff he's doing today getting reps at different positions not just defensive tackle getting on the defensive end and josh pascal uh if you guys know me 
Kentucky Wildcats are kind of my, you know, I got, I got some family connections there. So I like to see my Kentucky Wildcats doing well. Um, I would do my cats chant, but it's really too loud and I don't want to deafen anyone or blow out anyone's eardrums. So Josh Pascal, University of Kentucky, cancer survivor, man. I've always been cheering for this kid. He was my X factor last year. Very versatile. Could play defensive end, defensive tackle, just like Levi, just like Josh Pascal can, just like the commish can. So I'm curious to see, is there going to be an odd man out there? Is there, is there enough reps for, for everyone to go around? Or are we going to be talking someone's getting cut? I don't know, but this is just part of that bloodbath that Brad Holmes was telling us about. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, Josh Pascal. And the reports were that he was getting in the backfield with some very, very nice finesse pass rush moves from what I saw some, uh, a reporter on Twitter. I can't remember who it was. I'd love to give you a shout out. Just can't remember. Kind of took my notes in a hurry today because I was at work. So I would love to give you a shout out, but I did read that Josh Pascal was playing opposite of Hutch and being in the backfield with some very nice pass rush moves. That's what got me really excited. Like not just getting in the backfield, but Hey, he's got some moves, man. He's been working on his arsenal. You know, he's got some tools in the shed to get back there and, and be disruptive. So I love, love, love to hear that. Uh, next on my list, I have another solid day for Hannon hooker, man. This is exactly what I've been talking about all off season. Show me on an NFL football field that your game is translating to the NFL from college and I'll be ecstatic. And so far I got to pump the brakes a little bit because it's still, we're only a couple days into training camp, guys. I can't get overly excited, but I do love what I'm hearing so far. Now, I want to see these practices stack on top of each other. I want to see not just good days, but good weeks, good months, good preseason games, good practices throughout the season. Let me just have that nice little security blanket that if something happens to Jared Goff, Hennon Hooker comes in and we don't miss a beat. That's all I've been saying about Hennon Hooker. For those of you guys who have been watching the show long enough, you know you've seen us go back and forth about Hendon. All I've, all I've said is I just want to see his game translate. So far, very early, it's looking like it's translating. He's looked very comfortable in the pocket, looks very accurate in, in, some, in some tight windows that he's throwing the football. Uh, deep ball, you know he's got a cannon. He's athletic. I'm very, very happy to hear it. I've never said anything negative about Hennon Hooker, just that I want to see his game translate. And I want to see these practices continue to – be a story. I want to keep getting on Twitter and seeing Hendon Hooker had another great day. When I go to practices, if I get up there, I want to watch Hendon Hooker and say he had a good day. When the season starts, I want to see Hendon Hooker in the preseason games. I want to get on here and do our recap shows. And the first thing I'll say is Hendon Hooker had a good game. That's what I want to be able to talk about. So uh, from all reports, it looked like Hendon Hooker had another solid day. So I I'm ecstatic for that. Last thing I'm going to talk about, and I don't know how far I want to dive because I am kind of working on a, uh, an episode about Jameer Gibbs, but this dude looks and sounds and is talking a lot of good stuff. Um, talk about him and David Montgomery have some goals that they want to do come uh, accomplish as a tandem. He's not putting that out into the atmosphere and a lot of people want to know what they are. And I don't uh, let, let that fuel him in, let that, whatever that goal is be a fire for him the whole season. Um, is it a thousand yards and a thousand yards? I, I I don't know. Is it is it something more crazy? Is it two thousand yards uh, rushing and eight hundred yards receiving? Is it something like that? I don't know, man. I don't need to know. All I want to see is that whatever his goals are get achieved because I'm sure they're not um, easily achievable goals. If they, if they were, everyone would try to do it. So I don't want to fully dive into Jameer Gibbs because I am working on some stuff with some clips and some videos. Uh, that I'm going to try to get out hopefully this weekend. Um, whenever I get a chance to get some editing done, I'm going to work on that a little bit more. But I will say that Jameer Gibbs, I watched his um, press conference, or if you want, not a press conference, kind of like an interview, I guess, after practice. And uh, just some of the stuff he was saying, man, it's just got me excited about just the, the team's focus and and what his goals are and how he's always looked up to guys like Marshall Falk. And, and you know, he's a big fan of Christian McCaffrey and, and – Barry Sanders, obviously. So I want to save some stuff that I want to say for that later episode, guys. So that's it for training camp today. Some great news, a lot to talk about. Uh, covered a lot of topics, guys. Please, please, please leave some comments down below. Stick around, hit that like button, guys, and I will be back later with another show. Right,